Hey there, and thank you for joining me for another episode of YQG and Bloom. My name is Tracy Martins, and today I am with Scott Edmund, the owner and operator of Edmonds & Co. Woodcrafts. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you I'm here. I'm excited to be here. I do have one of his signs, <laughs> and I love the sign. It's going up this weekend. I'm, I'm looking behind <laughs> me at my husband because I, I keep wanting to put it up. How did you start with your woodcraft business? Uh, it started with actually a home renovation in our basement. Our old basement had a bunch of barn board in it. So when we did the reno, I kind of saved it. And then it started out with building wood planter boxes. Mm. And then it kind of evolved quickly into the laser cutting just because of my schedule and running power saws at night wasn't like the greatest thing to keep the neighbors happy. So yeah, we you still, quickly evolved into laser cutting where it was quiet. Yeah. So you, you still have a day job and yep, uh, I work at Chrysler, so it's swing shift. So it's kind of a juggle there. And then with the two kids, it was going out to the shop after they'd gone to bed to get stuff done or mm -hmm. work on stuff. So goodness, quickly moved from a table saw to <laughs> table laser saw. cutting. Yeah. Now, what made you go and buy a laser cutter? Because I know you were doing your woodwork with your regular tools yeah. and pissing so, off the yeah, neighbors. Yeah, on top of upsetting the, or trying not to upset <laughs> the neighbors, we, was I bought uh, like just a little desktop, small, it did like CNC engraving and laser cutting. So we bought that kind of just to mess around with smaller things. And then I think it was about two weeks later, a part broke on this thing. So I went to go order the other part and my wife's like, why are you messing around with this thing? Like you've been talking to people about getting the big one, looking at the big one, just pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. It's COVID, pull the trigger and figure out how you're going to make the money to pay it off. <laughs> so <laughs> when your significant other tells you to go buy something when expensive. When the wife, wife says to spend money, you do it. spend money, you don't ask questions, you just go do it. And then you figure out <laughs> how to recoup that money after you do it before uh, she changes her mind yes <laughs> <laughs> well it's great that she's supportive yes very supportive does she help you out at all uh she likes to do the the packaging of mm -hmm. things she's very all like the background organization stuff that's her thing like doing all the business work the bank you know what i mean keeping oh that's good you know that everything organized and so that you can just concentrate on making it yes Awesome. And then my daughter concentrates on selling it all now. So <laughs> <laughs> I saw your fridge magnets and they're amazing. Have you ever thought of doing them as a DIY with paints? Uh, yeah, we have some boxes getting. I just ordered boxes, yeah, special lots. boxes for doing like, because we at Urban Market right now, I, had, and I think they still got some of the, uh, I did wood heart cutouts. So they look like the Valentine's Day, like candy hearts. Mm -hmm. With that, and then it came with like paint and brushes in a little pack. Oh, and then we also you have, do have them. a couple like flower ones, so it looks like a bouquet of flowers that you get to paint. So nice. we'll have some more of those coming for Mother's Day. And then, that's awesome because I just saw it on your Instagram, but I didn't realize it was a DIY where you could paint it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're we're trying to get a few more of those ideas out there. Hopefully, and some of that stuff will end up at Urban Market and through the markets this summer. That's great. Everyone loves this DIY paint stuff, which is great. It gives them something to do too. Yep. <laughs> And you don't have to buy the laser cutter to do it. Exactly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we also have bird uh, feeder ones. So it's like a cutout of a little a little wooden house. Mm -hmm. And then it's geared towards kids. You smear peanut butter on it and then you dip it in the bird seed and then it gets hung up in the tree. So it's like a little but, rainy day kit for something for the kids to oh, do. They love that. And then they can watch all the birds. Yes. And squirrels. Yep. It's usually the squirrels, but... <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. I, they need food too. I feed the squirrel thing. You. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. How does the laser cutter work? So the simplest way I can kind of tell people is it's like a giant printer. It works like a giant printer or a cricket cutter where you're plugging everything into your printer, you're hitting send, and then your laser cutter is cutting everything computerized, your design onto your 
either your sheet of plywood, your charcuterie board, acrylic. There's so many different things that you can actually laser engrave or etch leather. There's people that like quilt makers that buy laser cutters just to cut out their patterns. Oh, wow. Because you can cut fabric with it. Like there's a lot that's so versatile that it's almost hard as a business to just have like say just signs or just board games or, you know, stuff like that. There's so many things that you can do with it, which is kind of nice. You're not stuck in the, in, in a run. one thing, right? You can always kind of be on top of different trends with the laser cutter. Yeah. Cause you offer so many different products. I, I know of the signs and the board games. Yep. And I think I saw at um, Urban Market you had uh, fridge magnets. Yes, we started doing fridge magnets for there and just little, trying They're to get really into like the, the littler things that are great as little stuffers as gifts. Like you notice when like at Urban Market, a lot of the people that are getting gifts for people, they're going to buy a couple small like fillers or maybe something big. So it's nice to have the signs in there, but mm-hmm. then also have the, the smaller things that people like too. And you said charcuterie boards. Yep. Charcuterie so boards, cutting everything. boards. It's it's pretty endless. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it, The only thing I can't cut is metal. Oh, that's, that's a okay. whole different laser cutter. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you incorporate acrylic into your... Uh, yeah, we started using acrylic uh, just before Christmas. Finally found a source for good, cheap, like cheaper acrylic that's quality and just kind of bought some just to mess around with and... It's nice. To, I, I really like being able to use like use wood and acrylic on the same project. Kind of mm-hmm. gives it that nice yeah. different layers kind of. It's like more layered to me, I guess. No, more, it, it does. It looks really nice because on mine... It's more it, like a, of a mixed media art, right? Yeah, because on mine, the, the words stay golden were in the acrylic, yeah. but I, did, I had no idea it was acrylic it it looks beautiful how it stands up and then you have all the cutout of the wood and what kind of wood do you use uh so i use uh a maple plywood or an aspen plywood traditionally laser cutters use uh a russian birch plywood but Hmm. with things that go on in russia getting that stuff is impossible and if you can get your hands on it it's like 300 dollars a sheet so oh my goodness that's so in, I've, we've decided instead of, you know, trying to source something from Russia to find a Canadian product instead to kind of keep it more local. So we found a company that sells maple and aspen plywood and it's a quarter inch thick. So we usually use quarter inch. I can cut up to an inch thick though. Now I saw that you were working on a sign for Urban Art Market. I haven't yes. been there in no, a bit. it's almost done. The weather, yeah. because it's a big, like the bigger piece, trying to get it outside of paint and then having a window of opportunity where it wasn't going to rain and dry. It's been crazy. So is it going to be like a sandwich board uh, type? Yes, we're, so we're going to be redoing their sandwich board. Um, I'm hoping to have it done this week. It's all glued up. It's just a matter of getting the frame built out for it. So mm. fingers now that, crossed the weather. <laughs> yes. Well, now that I can do the, the the remaining of the stuff for that sign is indoor with the week off from Chrysler this week. Well, it'll it'll be out there by the end of the week. And I can't wait to see it because my husband and I were just talking about for our studio yeah. here about doing a sandwich board because. Yeah. Nobody seems to find our location in this little strip yeah. plaza. <laughs> Everybody goes to the wrong place. I our think this one, frame-wise, we're going to do a little different. We're not doing the A-frame. We're doing more of a, just like a straight-up frame where the main sign, mm-hmm. the main sign will be on hinges, so it doesn't have to worry about blowing over. Or the, that part of the sign will just kind of move with the wind. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, it'll be a little bit different for I can't wait A-frame. to see it. Yeah, neither can I, really. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it fun when you go outside the box and you try something different? And- I love always, especially with the laser cutting and being in the shop, is trying new things. Like, you get customers like, hey, can you try this? Can we do this? Can we make this happen? And it's always nice to kind of, okay, yeah, we can try it. Mm-hmm. And then to see the outcome is always nice, right? It's always nice to, and then you've got something else in your back pocket almost like for when the next person comes along and says, oh, can we do that? Of course we can do that. I've already done that. We can, 
when you get to do new things like that, like this sign, it's almost free advertising. It is. Well, it's it's perfect. And I mean, it, like you said, it, it's nice to try new things. Now, has there been something that seems like, oh, that's easy to do, and then it just takes forever, and it seems to be more <laughs> complicated uh, and It's intricate. gotten better. Uh, the first, like, year with that laser cutter, because there's a lot of touchy little keeping things aligned and learning different powers to cut through woods and so there was a big learning curve and of course a big I chomped off a little bit more than I could chew at times but you got to kind of just go with it right and hope for the best everything's been great so far we haven't had any we've had disasters but nothing you get that everywhere Nothing huge. We're still running, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you're at Urban Art Market. At, yes. Now, I did see that you have games. What type of games do you make? Uh, we have this dice baseball game, which has been a great seller. It's almost a cross between cribbage and a dice game. Uh, you're using the cribbage pegs as your players for the baseball. You're rolling two dice to see if you got like a home run or a strikeout. Everyone seems to love it. I still haven't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we have that. And then the same concept, but it's a dice football game. Oh, cool. And then we've done cribbage boards. We're trying to get some cribbage boards into urban market. Um, obviously, if someone's looking for a cribbage board, we're finding those are something that gets personalized a lot, like the top of it. Mm -hmm. So it, we'll get some in there. It's just hard to... There's always these, I find these certain things that will sell well at places like Urban Market. Mm -hmm. And then you have this uh, almost like a menu of things that sell well through me on Instagram because it's, people are looking to get it personalized, right? Yeah. Finding a lot of people with the, like the cribbage boards are as a wedding gift to their parents because their parents play cribbage or their uh -huh. grandparents, right? So they want kind of like their family name on it and stuff. Yeah. So we got to come up with, I think, some designs where, like, I don't know, like, it's just welcome to Windsor on it, you know, something like that, local. That would be cool. Kind of personalized, but not personalized cribbage boards for there. And have you done cr the Crocono yet? The what? Crocono. It's oh, yes, yes. Dad. No, I know. I, had so I have someone looking at making, <laughs> having me make one of those. There's another game I've got to get out for someone. I forget what it's called. It's some game that they used to play when they were kids. And it's like a round board kind of deal. So I know everybody they can't find it. And I was like, I don't even know this game. Like I actually had to search the internet. It wasn't like the first thing that popped up on Google. I know. I haven't heard the name Crokinoe. I haven't heard this game since I was little. And now it seems everybody's it, talking yeah, about it again. Talking, I think uh, chapter two has they like They had it at the table the other night I, I when, when we were there and I saw it. And it's like. Oh my God, I haven't yeah. seen these in forever. But you should start making those. <laughs> I think you should. Everybody's talking about it. That would be a good seller for the yeah. markets this yeah. summer. And what about, um, say, the Yardsy that everybody does, the Yard um, Yardsy? I haven't. We made oh, one of those. that might be hard. We made one of those for the house. Mm -hmm. And we play it all the time. Same with the, like the yard size uh, Jenga. Ooh. So we've made that for the house. I've been thinking maybe bringing some of that stuff to markets. For like season, it's not, seasonal, yeah. Yeah, and it's something that's not laser engraved, but it's something that people enjoy, outdoor games, like yard games and stuff like that. So we also have, I just made one for my kids. Of course, my kids always get the games first, like the, yeah. the first round, <laughs> uh, a Connect Four. So we'll be adding Connect Four to the... Oh, fun. List. It's a nice wood one. And then uh, the pieces, the disc pieces are uh, acrylic. Yeah, you can so, do acrylic. Yeah. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, was it hard to learn how to figure out how to use that laser cutter? It was a learning curve. Now, luckily, there's, there's not much you can, like when you buy a laser cutter, it comes with the instructions to set it up. But there's so many other things you got to kind of take into consideration. Like you got to align the thing. So there's a big learning curve kind of deal. Mm-hmm. With frustration, of course, you know, you're spending money on wood and it's not cutting through properly. You've, you're wasting, there's a lot of material waste, I find. And all the laser cutters I've talked to have said that there's a lot of material waste at the beginning, but once you get it, you get it. 
And it's true. Once you get it, you get it. And luckily, I find just like all these other makers, like it doesn't matter if it's laser cutting, jewelry making, there's all these communities like online or all these videos on YouTube on how to make something or get something to work that it's incredible. Like there's so many, I've found so many people even on Instagram with laser cutters that are doing things that are incredible. And all you have to do is message them. And they're more than willing to tell you their secret or help you or... Oh, that's nice. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just a really... And that, I think that's helped with me getting into this laser thing was there's always someone there to help. I, I even get it now where people will message me, hey, where'd you get that laser? Or, hey, when you're... I have the same laser. What are your settings when you're cutting this? It's yeah. no problem to kind of hand over your secrets and everyone else is handing over the secrets, right? Exactly. And really, when it comes down to it, it's not a secret. You just got to go on YouTube. And I did the same thing. So to save that guy from going and searching videos on YouTube, you kind of... Oh, why it's, not? It's nice yeah. to have a community where... Yeah. And you see that else. with all local makers. Like with this sign that we're doing for Urban Market, I reached out to Iris and Marnie. Mm-hmm. And she instantly said no problem and did all the font work and the designs for the sandwich board. Now it's nice that I'm doing things with makers that normally I would never would have. Yeah. And, and, well, and, and she's an artist, so yes, it's perfect. And, yeah, and it was nice to see like something other than her jewelry, right? Like I didn't know she was such an amazing artist like that until I actually talked to her or the podcast and stuff mm-hmm. like that, right? So it's nice to meet these people and connect with them. And it's kind of like we're all in it together kind of deal it's true i love the maker community in the windsor essex county area it's just it's very close-knit yep. and everybody is very supportive of everybody else's work and yep. it's really great and especially at urban urban art market is you guys it's like a little family and oh, everybody and helps each other totally and i just finished my last month there and it was like so welcoming like, mm-hmm. like you'll see that at a at any pop-up market Someone has something that breaks down, a tent gets blown over from the wind. And they're helping. And all of a sudden, there is every single maker from that pop up vendor, for, or those vendors are there to help that one person. I think with our area, it seems in the last couple of years, we have so many pop up markets and we have so many events that I've heard a few people say that there's too many. I think there are a lot of them. But I think it's also helping the people in this area learn to appreciate all of our artwork and they get to know the makers, they understand what goes into it, so they understand the costing and you don't have as much as what we did a few years ago where people would say, oh my God, I can't believe how much this costs. You still get it, but not as much because they're seeing it all the time now. Yeah, there's a pop-up every week. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it's too much. No. I think it's great. Just like, you know, a guy down the way from me at work bought a laser cutter and he's going to start doing laser cutting. It's like, can't. Get, there's plenty of room for all of us, right? And you're seeing that exactly. with all these pop-up markets every weekend. Like you could spend a whole weekend probably now driving around the county going to different pop-ups right well before christmas i was hitting markets almost every night yeah. on the weekend and but that's, it's, that's it's, in the winter and it's nice for the for the people that can't go oh my gosh i have an event that weekend so i can't make it yeah. and i'm really bummed out okay well there's another one next yeah. weekend and guaranteed you're going to have at least half of the same vendors there so at least they're not missing out and the vendors aren't missing out on those customers either it's, a couple of years ago, like when we first started, our first event was, uh, and it was just after kind of the COVID thing cleared out, was a street closure in Walkerville. So it was a Walkerville art market. Mm-hmm. I think it was the first one she put on after the whole COVID thing. So we're, we're getting back into it. And it was like, that was our first market. We popped up. We were right in front of the old white bank there. Mm-hmm. And we sold our first piece and it was like, we're hooked. Granted, since then, there's markets all the time that was one where it was like you had to apply to be in Mm -hmm. so we got lucky that was our first market but for all these other like i call them like basement makers right like these guys and girls that are making stuff in their free time that don't know or they're kind of like afraid to get into this whole pop-up vendor market the the more mainstream market yes 
I find these smaller ones are mm. a good avenue just to try it out. Because you know, the bigger ones, you're putting in a lot of money. Yeah. Right? yeah, there's the tent, there's the supplies, there's the tables. There's a lot going into it. It's not just you're popping up and yeah. So it's where all there. where I think with these smaller ones, it's nice because the the newer makers kind of get a chance to get a a feel for it, right? Yeah. And then even like last year, we kind of stepped back from markets a little bit just because busy with Instagram or like Facebook orders and spending the. It was the first COVID free summer right so mm-hmm. it's like Kate take the kids wherever yeah but this year we're gonna definitely do more of those but yeah definitely for those people trying to get into markets look at these little ones like even like these little there's people like cultures has one in their parking lot this yeah. weekend just cuz I know I I was really I thought about that doing I missed, it and then I looked at the weather I missed out going to see it and I was bummed I afterwards I'm like son of a gun yeah I wanted and to go to that one I was looking forward to it the thing is too with these markets is you'll see because there are so many of them and I've been to markets where it's like people walk by and look mm-hmm. there's only a few people maybe you know it didn't get advertised like you know it happens just like any business regular business yeah. you're gonna have a day where not many people walk through yeah. the door so you're going to have a vendor weekend every once in a while that's like that. And you'll notice like the ones that kind of leave early. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you right now, leaving early is not Worst good. Worst thing you can do because you always have those last you minute people. You have those last minute people. And we did one last year. It was like the last market of the year. I wanted to go home. Our tent had a blowout. Like weather was just fall crap weather. I'm like, you know what? Just two hours left. Just ride it out. Mm-hmm. If I hadn't have ridden that out, the girl that earns, owns Urban Surf just by chance pulled in, saw that I had one of my layered maps there and asked, can I do one of Lake St. Clair? No problem. We made that happen. We made that sale. But if you don't stay there to put in the work, mm-hmm. you're not going to. So I didn't make a sale that day. It was a garbage day. I lost out because I had a tent blowout. But at the end of the day... You got you, future customers. You got a future customer that just ordered something pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> covered the cost of my weekend. Very nice too. Yes. And it's just another connection, right? Oh. And that's the thing I find, I'm finding with these getting into this maker world. It's all about the connections, right? It really is. And that's why whenever I see events, I tell people that I know, like if you have something going on, if you have an event or if you have a new product you want to get out yeah. there, send it to me, like DM me. I don't mind sharing it. And I, I tell everybody, like if you see a market or something or advertisement for something, share it. Yep. And that way everybody can yep. see it. It'll go through their feed at least once and yep. maybe they'll throw it in their calendar. And wasn't it with that Urban Surf where you got into doing the maps? Uh, or had you done maps? I had done that? maps. So my sister lives up in North Bay. Mm-hmm. I grew up in North Bay. So we kind of went up there for the for a week in the summer just to visit. And I've always loved up there. There's uh, a lake right in town called Trout Lake. Yes. It's always been like my favorite lake growing up there. So on it was like on the drive back from that trip, I'm like, I want to start making laser cut maps. They are really cute. And I like them. So we did Trout Lake as the first one. I sold, I think, three or four of those just to people up there, just through Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what started the laser cut maps. And then it uh, did a couple other different maps. And one of my most favorite things to make, I I like being able to do the different layers. It's it's like a thicker, more kind of almost statement piece, right? It really is. Now, do you also still do the planter boxes or have you moved past that? <laughs> I, I'm only um, asking because it is I coming in the spring. Yes, it is. I haven't done any. I would love to. Actually, you know what? I would love to get back into doing like the planter boxes. They were, they were fun to make. The neighbors probably hate me because it's like hours of the table saw <laughs> going in the backyard. Yeah, my husband made a couple last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. I think maybe for myself this year, and you know, I, I'll never say no to an order. If I can do it, then I will. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's more than just kind of a hobby now and just being a maker. It's an actual business. Business. Yeah. And that's kind of what the plan was because after the last couple of years of Chrysler, you definitely, it's not like the good old days when you could rely on them, right? 
Because before I got that lucky, as everyone says, the lucky ticket to get into Chrysler when they did that big new hire mm -hmm. uh, eight years ago, was I was a chef. And I loved the fact that I could go into work, be creative, use my hands, just the, the feeling of people enjoying your food. You know, it's totally like, like as being a maker, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that pride in taking care of a product and getting it out there. So I was like, that was the one thing too with getting into this laser cutting and woodworking was I was missing that artistic connection, right? Yeah. I went from dishing out sushi and food to high-end clients to putting a part on the same yeah, band hey. every, what is it, 43 seconds now? <laughs> so this has also been a kind of nice mental it's true. Thing I, for me. You know, I, I, I do crafts myself, There's some knitting, crocheting, but it's so nice to just have something that keeps your hands going, that keeps your mind going. Yeah. And I think everybody should get into some form of craft Oh, absolutely. Work. And that's something like my kids, they're constantly, I'm like, my daughter's in our office has this shelf of just like every single craft you could imagine of doing. So her coming in with you to Urban Art Market's like heaven. Oh, she <laughs> loves doing that. She also loves buying the, all the things. But uh, And pop-up markets are her thing. Oh, yeah. Like she can't wait till she's old enough that I can drop her off at the pop-up market with everything and she gets to run it by herself for the day without How me How old there. is she? She's only 10. The ladies from Cotton Candy, I was just here and the one girl's daughter is 10 and she's their tent manager and she loves working yeah. the tent with them. Yeah. She, I think it's a perfect age for them yeah, to get she started. She loves it. She loves selling stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, she always brings some of her own stuff to set up at the markets. Does and, it sell? Uh, yeah. She sold some bracelets and stuff. She does bracelets, oh, like cool. those little jewelry and then... Like her, like her selection of what she has for crafts at home is just nice, absolutely unreal. Well, that's so good. There, she has a lot that she hasn't done yet, but she's always trying new things, trying a new craft, or trying to figure out a craft that she can make a lot of to sell. Well, it sounds like so, she's going to be creative. Yeah, well, very creative. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, do you have anything new that's going to be coming up that you're thinking of for the market season? Um, market season, I think we're going to do uh, like our standard issue signs that we have, kind of mm -hmm. like the stuff we have at Urban Market. The one thing I like to kind of, I'm not going to say that every sign is going to be like a one-off or one of a kind, mm -hmm. but we kind of don't want to be like, I don't want to say stuck with a bunch of signs. Oh, we made these signs and they didn't sell. Just, yeah. It's kind of nice to have like, a, and even if it's kind of close to a, one I made before, it's still a one-off. It's kind of yeah. nice that the customer can know that they bought this sign. They're not going to go to their friend's house in a week mm. and see the same sign. Yeah, so it's, it's personalized that, in some way. Yeah, it's still personalized. It's just, it didn't get engraved with a name on it or a mm. date. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's kind of, like I said, nice to know that, oh, I'm the only one that has... This, this on my wall. And if anybody wants to see your stuff, they can see it at Urban Art Market. Yep. And any of we're going to see in the markets this yeah, year. I'll be doing a lot. Uh, I'm going to try to do all like the Anise, Anise's markets this year. We're going to do those. We were thinking about art in the park. Uh, it's <laughs> logistically is I think that's absolutely a, like if I want to if I want to do art in the park next year I need to start making stuff for art in the park next year yesterday. this year yes <laughs> <laughs> so we were gonna do it and then kind of realized maybe that would be a little too much to take on just yet just yet how can they get in touch with you online? Uh, either through my Instagram or my Facebook. And the handle for both of those is Edmonds & Co. Woodcrafts. If you're at Urban Market and you are looking for something that's not there, the girls there will more than happy, I'm sure, to give you a business card or get my contact information to you. Yeah, and that's great. And again, I want to thank you so much, Scott, for stopping by oh, today. Thanks for having us. This is awesome. And I love my sign, and he is going to be making my new YQG and Bloom sign. Yes, so. we'll get that started soon. Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting my turn. I want to see the <laughs> urban, art, urban Art Market one first. Yeah. 
So again, my name is Tracy Martins. I want to thank you so much for joining us for another episode of YQG and Bloom. And you guys have a great day. 